Yes, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. Just giving you a roundup of things that I've seen on Twitter in the news outlets um, about potential news of incomings and outgoings and other stuff uh, surrounding Burnley Football Club. And a big shout out to those of you listening to us on the podcast. We are now available as a podcast. Um, but not on the Turfcast feed. Obviously, I mentioned it last week, but I'll quickly mention it again for those of you watching on YouTube. If you want to listen to this as a podcast, you can, but it is not on the Turfcast feed. It is on its own feed. Just search Claret's Daily News in your favourite podcast provider and you will find it there. Uh, but for those of you listening for the first time that haven't listened to it, this is a daily show. I say daily, just weekdays, where I just basically talk about stuff that the journalists and reporters and news outlets are already reporting. Um, so you very rarely get any massive nuggets of information that are, you know, a big secret or big ITK thing. Because I, I, despite what the club may think, I never once pretend to be anything like that. All I do is regurgitate the stuff that's already out there, just in one bite-sized little chunk for those of you that can't be bothered or don't have time. Uh, to be sitting on Twitter and news out outlets all day. Um, but the main story from the weekend, let's get into it. The main story from the weekend is it looks like Arine Mjoric could be going to... Well, it looks like he is going to Ipswich, to be fair. Now, this one first came from Alan Nixon um, on Saturday afternoon, and he reported that Ipswich Town are preparing a £15 million, uh, million, million pound bid for Arianet Mjoric. Now, this story developed pretty quickly, um, but we'll get onto that in a second, because I do just want to quickly read out what Nixon said to um, everyone in his article. Now, this article is behind a paywall, um, so for, this is why I tend to read these ones out, because I know a lot of people won't have that. He did say, Ipswich are swooping for Burnley keeper Aaron Murich in a shock £15 million deal. Murich struggled to make an impact in the Premier League last season, but the Tractor Boys are paying big for him. The Clarets are selling Murich and will head south. Uh, sorry, the Clarets are selling, should be a comma there, and Murich will head south to tie up the transfer as his turf more spell ends. So yeah, it is looking like he's going. Um, but again, with Nixon, there's always the, mm, but it's Nixon. Um, but this story developed quite quickly, as I've said. Um, where David Ornstein then quickly reported that it's happening quickly. Um, Ipswich have a total agreement with Burnley uh, for Murich for an initial £8 million, so a lot less than Nixon was reporting, um, with um, you know add-ons and stuff rising to £10 million. Uh, and he said the medical is currently being arranged. So uh, obviously, again, we're that far down the line that the, the medical is is being sorted. Um, but then again, another development, uh, BBC Sports, Shamoon Hafez, who is the North West reporter, so probably has the best contacts at Burnley Football Club out of these three, uh, said uh, a different price. He reported that the fee that we are looking at uh, was an initial 10, rising up to 15. So... A few things a little bit hit and miss coming from three different sources, all three different prices. So the way I look at that is Muric is definitely leaving, um, but we all expected that. He hasn't even come back to training, by the way. Um, so that is expected that he's going to be leaving. Like For me, I know some people on, on the hashtag were saying, well, you know, he were trek like shit last year. So I understand why he's not coming back. Not for me. Not for me. No, I don't care how you've been treated. You come back to training. You, you put the minimum effort in. And another thing, I've said it on a few different podcasts. I agree, he was tret like shit last season. He should have played more games. He should have been. He should have started the season, in my opinion. And then when it was seen that Trafford probably wasn't as good as we were expecting, even though I know before I get grief off people, I do agree that he will be a very good goalkeeper in the future. And I have to say that every single time um, that I mention him, um, he should have been. Murich should have been brought in earlier, in my opinion. So I do agree he wasn't really given a fair crack of a fair crack of the whip last season. But I was hoping that he would see that that obviously wasn't the club, that wasn't the fans. It was one man or one management team. Um, and they're not here anymore. So I was hoping that he would think to himself, I'll give it another go. But evidently not. I think 
I'm not saying he's using it as an excuse, but I think that that is part of it. I think he's he's, he's kicking up a bit of a stink because he wants to stay in the prem and he's using that as an excuse. Oh well, they didn't treat me very well last year. It's a completely different team now, mate. It's a completely different management team, so I'm not buying it for me. But I, I do agree, he, he should have been given given more chances. But yeah, looking like Muric to Ipswich, it sounds like the medical will be happening soon. Although he did put a picture up on his Instagram story the other day where he clearly wasn't in England. Um, so if 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 the medical is getting booked soon, it will probably be this week. He'll probably fly back from wherever he is and get the medical done this week. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see on the price. Um, but yeah, it's looking like Mioch is going to whip switch. Elsewhere, and thankfully, some news of incomings. Burnley are, according to um, sorry, according to a journalist from French news outlet Liquide, striker Andreas Hontondre will join Burnley from SC Kane for an estimated fee of four million. Now this came out. Um, what date is it today? It's the 15th, isn't it? Yeah, this came out yesterday morning. Um, and, th and that makes it sound like it's pretty much done the way he was reporting it. Um, but yeah, we reported on him last week, didn't we? Um, he's he's um, obviously, as it says in, in there, he's a, he's a striker. He's not uh, the kind of player I know too much about, if I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm, I'm not sure many people will do. Um, but the way that this guy's reporting it does make it sound like it's pretty much a done deal. But uh, it's another one, and I know a few people um, will understand that pretty much every transfer is a risk, but I do feel like this one is a bit of a risk. Um, he's coming from, you know, he's an unknown, coming from, you know, a, a lesser league. Um, and, yeah, for me, it's it, it, it's a risk. I doubt he'll be the main striker. Um, and we have better at the club. I can't see anyone coming in for Lyle. Um, having said that, and I wasn't going to give this its own little piece because I didn't, see anything of note of it but I did see a Villa page reporting that um, Villa are looking at him but again he's not he's not good enough to play for Villa is Lyle with all due respect um, so I doubt that they're looking at him but again with this guy he'll be coming in as backup um, potentially behind Foster potentially behind Foster and Jay it'd be impossible of me to make a judgement on that when I don't even know him um, but yeah it'd be interesting to see what that how, how that develops over the next couple of days because according to this one it's pretty much done. Yeah, that unfortunately, that's pretty much it for today's show. There's not too much out there. Um, yeah, I mean, now that the Euros is finished, I, I suspect it'll start ticking along. But I think the main things at first over the next couple of weeks will probably be outgoings. I suspect Muric will, will probably leave this week or early next week. I don't think Trafford will be too far behind him. And I think, unfortunately, we're going to start seeing the likes of Sanderberg and, and Wilson Orderbear leave as well. Uh, potentially more, um, we will see. Um, but obviously, these need to be replaced, especially the goalkeepers. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed we see something about a goalkeeper pretty soon. There may or may not be a couple of chats here and there that I've heard about goalkeepers. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. We definitely need a goalkeeper. But yeah, if you're listening on the podcast for the first time, get in touch and let me know how you felt the show went. It is. It can tend to be around eight minutes, this show. I always aim for minimum eight minutes because YouTube... That's the magic number. To be able to stick ads on your video, you need to get it to eight minutes. So I always make sure it's eight minutes. Um, but I tried not to make it any longer than 15. So it's always going to be like this bite-sized, quick fire, just bits of news here and there. Where if, for example, you can listen to it driving to work, driving home from work if I don't get it out by the morning. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you can just sit there with a coffee while you're eating your breakfast, just quickly keeping up to date with all the Clarets news. But yeah, let me know if you're watching on YouTube what you thought in the comments below today's stuff. It's a shame to see Murich leave, but I think we all expected it. And I think a lot of us, like me, expected him to, you know, not be happy with the way, with the way he was trekked last season, but were hoping that maybe he could see, you know, a bit of logic in staying because it's a new management team, but he's obviously made his mind up. And uh, yeah, let me know what you felt about the striker, whose name I have obviously butchered, and that's why I'm called Joe the Butcher. But yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for listening on the podcast, and we'll be back tomorrow morning.